If you've watched any of my training courses for any amount of time, you've probably heard me say that it's incredibly important that you always have a backup. A backup allows you to recover relatively easily and often very quickly if you ever lose any type of data. But simply saying that you need to perform a backup is only the first step. You need to think about all of the different variables and configuration options associated with the backup process. For example, how much data do you need to back up? Is it a few megabytes? Is it terabytes of data? Or is it more? And what type of backup are you planning to perform? And we'll talk about some of those types in this video. We also have to think about the type of media that we're going to use. Are we going to back up to a local tape or hard drive? Or are we going to back up to the cloud? We also have to think about where we're going to store that backup media once the backup is complete. Are we going to store it on site? Do we store it off site? Or do we store it in the cloud? We also have to think about the software that we're going to use to back up the data and what software is used to restore that information. Is this something that comes from a third party, or is it built into the operating system that we're using? We also have to think about the schedule that's associated with these backups. Do we back up everything every day, or do we only back up updates every day and then perhaps perform a full update every week? All of these decisions have an impact on the type of backups that you'll use and the process that you'll go through to create those backups. As the name implies, an on-site backup is a backup where the data and the backup media is located at the same location. You don't need a separate internet link or WAN link to be able to transfer that data across the network. The data is immediately available because it's located at the same location as you. And this is generally less expensive than going off-site because an off-site storage facility would commonly charge you for that service. An off-site backup is one where we can transfer the data to a different location and store that data elsewhere. We might also take physical tapes or backup media from our facility and ship them to a third-party site. Since that off-site location is network connected, we should be able to recover that data regardless of where we might be. Because you are network connected to the off-site backup location, you could easily restore that information from your new data center facility. And in many instances, an organization will use both of these strategies. They'll use an on-site backup to have information stored locally that can very quickly be restored. And they might use an off-site backup for a long-term storage option. Now that you have a location for this backup data, you need to think about when you're able to perform these backups. Some organizations might backup every week or every day, and in some cases, every hour. Sometimes these intervals are determined based on the total amount of data that needs to be backed up. These intervals may also be different depending on what the system happens to be doing. You may have some servers that rarely change the information that's stored on disk, so an hourly backup may not be necessary. It may be very reasonable to back up a device like that once a week. There might also be multiple backup sets where each set is backed up at a different interval. For example, you might have a backup set that performs a daily backup. So at the end of the month, you have about 30 backups that have occurred every single day. Or you might have weekly backups, so four backups every month. Or there might be monthly backups so that you have 12 separate backups that you can reference every year. As you can tell, there is significant planning that goes into determining how much data you're backing up and when you're going to back it up. There are many different options to consider. You may have multiple backup sets. Those backup sets may be backing up on different days. You might have different types of data that you're backing up depending on the server. And you might have different types of media that you're using as a backup destination. From a security perspective, the backups that we're creating can contain very sensitive information or private information for the organization. And we need to think about how we're storing that data and who might have access to it. This is something we can control very closely if the backups are on site. But if those backups are moved to a different location or transferred to a different site, then we may want to consider other ways of protecting that data. There have been cases where backup tapes were put into an employee's vehicle. That vehicle was used to transfer the tapes to a third-party storage facility. But before reaching that facility, the employee stopped their car to run some errands. And while they were out of the car, someone broke in and stole the backup tapes. Everything that was on those backup tapes is now potentially in the hands of a third party. This is why many organizations will encrypt all of the information that they're storing in a backup. This means that everything written to tape or transferred to a separate location is all being encrypted and is therefore unreadable by a third party. 
This also requires a bit of planning because you have to be sure that you have all of the recovery keys in case you ever need to restore from these backups. And if you're storing information in the cloud, encryption is almost required. You have no idea who might have access to this information when it's stored on those cloud servers. And you want to be sure that if someone does gain access to that cloud storage, that they won't be able to make any use of that data. Another type of backup that became very popular with the rollout of virtual machines is a snapshot. A snapshot is a very common backup method for virtual machines and in cloud-based infrastructures. A snapshot allows a system administrator to effectively back up an entire system with the click of one button. Effectively, a copy of that virtual machine is now created and set aside. So if you make any changes to that virtual machine or decide that you'd like to roll back to a previous configuration, you can simply apply a previous snapshot. One strategy for this type of backup is to take a snapshot every 24 hours. That way, you always have a daily update of that particular VM. These snapshots are very similar to an incremental backup, where only the changes every day are saved to the backup file. Since this is such an easy backup process, it's used before making any significant changes, and it's very easy to perform this every day. If you need to revert back to a previous configuration, it's just a few clicks to find the snapshot that you're looking for, and then just a few moments to have that snapshot update the current virtual machine. Here's an example of how you might be able to take a snapshot every day and what the contents of that snapshot might look like. Let's take an example where we have a virtual machine. And let's say the total amount of storage space on that VM is around 1 terabyte. Since this virtual machine is relatively new, we're only using a fraction of that available space. And the total data that's on that virtual machine is 100 gigabytes of data. When you take the first snapshot of that virtual machine, it captures all of the data that's contained within that VM. This would be, in this example, our Monday snapshot. Let's say that we have an automated process that performs this snapshot every day. And on Tuesday, a second snapshot is taken. But on Tuesday, you can see there have been changes to the data that's stored on this device. The users have changed approximately 40 gigabytes of that 100 that we started with. So our Tuesday snapshot still has 100 gigabytes of data, but only 40 gigabytes of that information is different from Monday. And on Wednesday, additional information was stored on this drive to bring it up to 120 gigabytes of data. And you can see the 20 gigabytes of new data is listed here at the bottom. So we can continue taking daily snapshots of this VM and continue to add them to this list. This will ensure that we have a backup of all of the data on that virtual machine for at least the last 24 hours. If you're going through this process of backing up all of this data in your organization, it's also important that you test these backups to see if you're able to properly restore. It seems like this should be a relatively obvious strategy. But unfortunately, not every organization performs tests. And this is something that can be a significant problem if you now run into a disaster and you need to recover that data. Some organizations perform tests of their backups on a regular basis. Perhaps a disaster is simulated, or a particular database is selected as a test subject. Assuming that your organization is performing different backups in different ways, this would allow your organization to ensure that all of those different methods are working properly. Once this data is restored, you're only halfway through the test. You need to make sure that applications are able to properly use that data or be able to restore a system from a full backup. So if you're backing up data every day, every week, or every month, make sure you run through some tests to be sure that you can restore from any of those backup sources. Another type of backup that allows you to copy data in almost real time is a replication. Replication allows you to take a single source of data and copy that data to one or many locations simultaneously. If any data changes with the original source, all of those remote backups are also updated in near real time. This means that if you make any changes to your local data, that in a matter of seconds or minutes, you'll have those changes pushed out to all of those replicated sites. This means that there will always be a real-time copy of that data located in another location, and that can certainly be used as a backup. 
In some cases, the replicated data will never be used until there is a disaster or some need to recover from that data. All of your local users are going to have their information stored on the local site. The replicated data could be used for backup storage, a replicated infrastructure, or a disaster recovery site. This can be especially useful if you perform disaster recovery at a hot site. You'll have all of your data constantly updated to that site. And if anything happens to your primary location, you can easily switch over at a moment's notice and still maintain the latest version of data. A concern for many IT professionals is when you are writing information to a drive, and during the middle of that writing process, you lose power to the system. This means that some data will be written to the drive, and other data will be lost. This may leave the database or the information that you're saving into a format that can no longer be used by the application. If you do find yourself with corrupted data after you have a power outage, then you'll need to remove that corrupted data and restore all of that data from backup. This is obviously time consuming, and not having access to that data could be a financial loss for your organization. To avoid this corruption, you may want to implement some type of journaling. Some applications will have their own methods of performing journaling, and there may be options within the operating system or file system that you're using to also provide a journaling function. Journaling works by first writing the data to a journal that is stored on that drive. Once the journal is written, that information can then be copied into the final version of that data. If you lose power while writing to the journal, then obviously the data inside of the journal will be lost. But since no data was written to the database when the power went out, the database is not going to be corrupted. But let's say that power goes out between the time that the journal is writing into the database. When the power comes back on, the database will obviously have a corruption, but it will look at the last journals to be able to update the information that is missing. This means that corruption can then be corrected in real time as the system is starting up. Once we know that information is correctly written to the journal and then correctly written to the database, we can then delete everything in the journal and start the process again. 